Hi, everyone. Uh, as already said, my name is Leila, and I'm heading actually global media buying currently at Be in Crypto. So what you need to know about Be in Crypto is actually that we are specialized in online media, online media sales, digital marketing services for the Web3 community, and our business is rooted in Web3 and crypto promotion. So actually, we do a lot of data work and most of my colleagues including myself <laughs> we are data professionals as well so we just we don't do just the marketing or the sales uh, our business is in data and we are constantly working on different strategies creating unique strategies for our partners and for different enablers uh, to see how we can improve how we can improve promotion, how we can improve marketing. So a big part of my job is actually media buying. So basically what I do, uh, I buy media through different uh, social media platforms and networks. And um, we are going to talk about remarketing because remarketing is one of the ways to stop media buying. So remarketing in the future could be something um, that could help to the marketing field for free promotion and free retargeting without paying um, money to Facebook, to Instagram, to Twitter, to LinkedIn, etc. And how we can do that? We can do that through blockchain. Uh, so when we are talking about blockchain and marketing, we usually talk how we, are, how we, how we can possibly promote uh, blockchain through marketing. And most of the companies, they are promoting blockchain. But uh, I want to talk about how blockchain could be used uh, for marketing. So how we can use blockchain data that we are receiving on our websites or social media channels for better remarketing strategies. So that would mean that remark that would mean that remarketing is actually data-driven marketing and blockchain could help. So before we start with remarketing and what is remarketing, etc., I would just like to know like how many of you heard about remarketing and do we have any marketers here? Okay, so we have some people people who heard about remarketing okay but could you guess like what would be remarketing so we have marketing and then remarketing okay so we can move to the sorry for me it's so hard to have both microphone and this thing okay so we will go through remarketing and what is remarketing what are remarketing benefits how it works and remarketing data. This would be sort of an introduction for you to understand what am I talking about so that we can come to the blockchain part. Okay, so here you can see like the school definition of remarketing, uh, but when we put it in a simple words, remarketing are users who have already visited our websites or social media channels and by taking information from them, their data, we create strategies so we attract them through our next campaigns. So that means that the content that we are producing and the content that we are placing and the sales that we are having is sponsored only to people who had already interacted with your brand, with your website, with your social media. So no random users here, no random people who don't want to hear uh, about your services or about your brand. Remarketing targets only the users and the visitors from the websites uh, who were on your, uh, who were on your websites, on your platforms. Okay, and you can see here that remarketing works in a way that collects data on people who have viewed your site, viewed your content, and then later on we used that data to contact them. So of course, like you can choose different form to contact them. But for example, if you have a contact form on your website, or if your users need to leave their emails or phone numbers, these are one of the ways to contact them. And all of the platforms, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, websites, <laughs> smart TV, his smartphone, uh, all of these devices and channels, they have their way of collecting data. So I will show you, of course, later on how we do that at my company through Facebook, but that is also possible to do uh, with 
blockchain. So what would be remarketing benefits? Why we would do that? Like why we would retarget the people who have already visited our uh, channels? First of all is because of the better conversions, because if we are selling something, we want people to get back to our website to check uh, what we are promoting. And of course, chance for conversions. Conversion could be sales, conversion could be, I don't know, like from your LinkedIn to your website, etc. But it's much higher percentage of conversions through remarketing. Then personalization. This is important for people who are in marketing field. Uh, so personal, personalization helps to write to write customized copies and customized content for people who are part of the Web3 community, so for people who are into crypto. So, so based on that, we can choose a specified, we can specify language and terminology that we are going to use. So once again, no, ran, no targeting random users, random people who are not into that. Okay. Then again, to improve reach, this is also for the marketing field. This way we can uh, have more people and users and visitors engaged with the content that we are promoting. And it's more profitable because with media buying, the thing that I am doing, we spend a lot of money on Facebook campaigns, LinkedIn campaigns, Twitter campaigns, Google ads, uh, Yahoo ads, Bing ads, etc., etc. So a lot of money is invested in that. When it comes to remarketing, if it's done properly and if we collect data properly and if we, st and if we start using blockchain data properly, uh, we, we might come to the point where it will be more profitable because we'd, we will not... Hello, welcome. <laughs> because in that case, we don't need to invest big amounts of money for this. Okay, so so far, do you have any questions, comments? Okay, so as you can see here, uh, where do we collect marketing data? I mean, it's more or less logical, but still it's important to say, so we have different web browsers, phone networks, smart TVs, and social media. So most of the companies, such as mine, we, we are mostly focused on web browsers and social media, but uh, we will see in the future and for the future reference how is this going to develop. So how remarketing works, we have users and we have users that visit your website. So not just website, it can be also social media. Uh, and then we have user leaves and is tracked. So we have the data of these users and user sees, let's say, one campaign on different websites. So from here, users click, user clicks, sorry, on the display to return to your website. So this is one of the ways to do remarketing. Currently, most of the companies um, are doing it through media buying, through paid media. Okay, so data-driven marketing uh, and data-driven marketing examples, as I already mentioned. So all of these things that I mentioned regarding remarketing, uh, the focus is in data and for web3 marketing data is extremely important for web2 web marketing data is more is not maybe that much important but for web3 we must use data it's this will be the future and this is actually already uh, the future so data driven marketing is a way of using data as a primary source of marketing operations within one company so on one side, we have marketing and people who are working in marketing and preparing campaigns, writing copies, doing optimization, campaign management, different marketing strategy. And then we have people who are working on collecting data, using that data, monitoring and tracking from all the campaigns so that we can have bigger picture about user acquisition. And once we start using user acquisition as a strategy, we will come to remarketing. Okay, so here you can see also some benefits from data collection. So first of all, we can determine what types of copy, what types of content. Copy is content um, for one text. Will be successful among different groups of users. And then we can determine the success of user segmentation in reaching the intended 
groups. So marketing data can be found, as I already mentioned, through ver various media channels. So here you can see some specific examples of data-driven marketing, uh, how it's done in a traditional way. So let's say that we are promoting something on Facebook or Twitter. We can use demographic data like geolocation, gender, etc., to collect it from these platforms. And then we can use one marketing channel to inform the another one what's happening and we can use customer data to increase engagement and revenue, which is, in the end of the day, the main goal, because what we want to see, we want to see a return of investment through marketing activities. Okay, so now I will give you an example uh, for Facebook. So here you can see two campaigns. <laughs> you can see two campaigns that were placed um, on Facebook, these are paid campaigns, and they are targeted like with different optimization settings for specific countries, specific genders, specific professions, vocations, etc. And then what we collected from these two campaigns, so you, you can see here, these are the names of the campaigns and in the middle you, you can see how many people, how many information we collected. So when we start a new campaign, we can use the list from these previous campaigns with people who have already interacted with content that we promoted. So this is actually a great way to have engaging users who are most likely to buy something from being crypto's website or from your website. And how blockchain is uh, used for remarketing. So, uh, I will not complicate this now because I already mentioned like um, uh, how data is used and what is remarketing, but as you can see here, by using and collecting data from users, we can create specific campaigns that are customized and personalized for specific targets, for specific people who want to engage with the type of content that we are promoting, and also uh, we can collect leads, people who are most likely to buy something, uh, and that way we are creating remarketing strategy. Okay, so uh, here on this graph, you can see like what would be the step one when someone, <coughs> sorry, when someone clicks on the web page, and then you have step two when the publisher of the page puts up the ad impression. Hi. <laughs> Okay, so then we have step three, which is a marketplace that has bidding from all the different competitors who want actually to buy the same thing or to collect the same data. And then we have the publisher who want to bid the ad with the most impressions. So step five, the ad is delivered. And step six, six the customer clicks on the ad. And we, as publisher, we convert them into um, well, into safe space and into profits. So this is for the future. This is not happening now, but this is something that we are striving for and that we want to work on. Uh, so blockchain in remarketing, what are the benefits? Like why would this be important to use blockchain data for remarketing? So the first thing, it removes the need for a third party publisher or website. Also, it removes like different cookies and any types of third parties, then marketers, they can speak directly to customers without mediators, without paying any campaigns. Then no need for PPC uh, media buying, saving money and not showing any of our content outside of our target market, which is very important thing and which is why many marketers, especially in this field, are struggling because it's very target it, it's very hard to tar target sorry narrow niche of people and especially if we have like sub niches of different targets it's very hard um, to understand how to create a unique strategy with some certain steps to do that it's almost impossible so that is why blockchain would be a way um, to this Okay, and this is like a, a conclusion uh, how we can uh, determine potential consumers and then 
differentiate between real site users and bots, which is also very important, I believe, for people who are in marketing. This would be uh, a huge thing because there are many bots on the internet and sometimes it's very hard to get rid of them. So they are just like sabotaging <laughs> marketing work generally. And it's also good because it allows to see previous visitors on our site and we can see, like we can track the history of, uh, of their of their clicks and general history and then running data um, it's showing uh, it's showing proper numbers because uh, currently in the marketing world it's hard to track all the campaigns especially when it comes to media buying because sometimes numbers uh, numbers are are not matching and uh, there are always some gas gaps and discrepancies between numbers that company has and that platforms have so this this would also help for uh, better tracking and monitoring of the results and this is the example uh, where you can see uh, how to collect information from users and visitors so current da database and then editorial learn affiliate and work these are the departments and teams within one company let's say so there are different ways that users when they come to the website or on some of social media uh, channels when they click on so something when they sign up or when they want to get information or when they want to download something they must leave their uh, their information their contact so that is one of the ways to collect these data so this would be like remarketing automation uh, for the future which is still not enabled so this is something that uh, web3 marketers and digital marketers within uh, this field are uh, striving for so if you have any questions i would be really happy uh, to provide you with proper information or any feedback comment And if not, I'm really happy that I had a chance to present this to you and I hope that we will hear more about using blockchain uh, in Web3 in the future. Thank you. Thank you so much, Leila. You're uh, welcome. What a, uh, oh, we had a question. Actually, a couple, great. Hi, thanks for that. Uh, have you been experimenting with any like on-chain marketing stuff? So looking at, for example, which wallets hold which tokens and sending them like airdropping them stuff or sending them messages through like existing sort of comms channels like Etherscan chat or DBank High or any of that? Uh, we have experimented. We have our affiliate partners and we actually we promote uh, different companies and their work, but I'm not allowed to tell <laughs> anything about that because we are protecting their data. But yes, we have a team, data team, that is data marketing team. So they are wor working on these things like day and night. So now we are wor working on both organic and paid promotion to see how we can use blockchain in a much better way. So we hope that we will be one of the pioneers uh, in the future. Uh, for this. So maybe next year I will have more information <laughs> about that. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. okay, any more questions? Yeah. Hi, uh, what about collecting the data? Um, do you think it's important to like to, to establish some interest, some systems to preserve the privacy of end users or to maybe have them you know encrypted or with zero knowledge something like that yeah definitely that's one of the things that i haven't mentioned because this is the keynote but there are a lot of pains <laughs> of using blockchain in web3 marketing and that is why it's still not implemented because it's very hard to understand how we can protect the data in a proper way and not to misuse uh, the data so yes uh, but i'm not sure what would be like the concrete step for that apart from uh, apart from having terms of use or something like that or different contracts that you users must agree on but there are many people who are using 
wallets and online forms generally and probably in two or three years time this will be normal but when it comes to data protection yes i think that this is like one of the biggest pains and that we still don't have information how we can protect that like 100 percent but your data i mean our data is generally not protected like when you go on facebook and if you click on something your data is there and anyone can use it so basically you are you are called lead to a lot of companies and on LinkedIn as well. So your data is all over the place and it's not, it's not protected. So it's just uh, the way it is. So I think that the same thing will be for the blockchain. It is how it is. <laughs> okay, any final thoughts, comments, ideas? I don't know if it's uh, super relevant since I'm going to ask uh, for Twitter, actually. Yes, please go ahead. Uh, how do you guys target the crypto market in Twitter? I mean, in mm. Twitter ads, let's... Yeah. That's the question because it's quite uh, complicated, that part, basically. Yeah. Well, we have a whole strategy before, before the execution part, so 70% of paid media process is actually preparation before launching the campaign. So what we usually do, we make a keyword strategy. Uh, we check all of our competitors' keywords and we also prepare all the organic keywords that users searched for when they came to Twitter and if they are interested in some specific topic, we also get the keywords for that. So. Twitter works in a way that you are bidding with different competitors on keywords. So let's say that you want to target something that is related to crypto. Most of your competitors and non-competitors, they will use Bitcoin, Ethereum, I don't know, crypto, news, etc. And the, these keywords would be the most expensive ones. So in that case, you need to find substitute keywords that people who are still into crypto would use. So. I don't know, like it can be blockchain, it can be machine learning, it can be artificial intelligence, it can be, I don't know, like many different substitute keywords that are not the most popular ones, that are not the first <laughs> keywords that come, that come up to your mind when you think about uh, crypto. And then it's very important on Twitter specifically to run three to five different tweets for one link. So in one, in one tweet you target through location, in the second tweet you target through followers, lookalikes, your competition basically. In the third tweet you target, I don't know, through hobbies and interests. And then in fourth tweet you target, I don't know, like you write just copy and the headline and then different formats. You go only headline plus carousel or video plus copy plus headline. All different variations, like five tweets under one campaign and in that case, and you need to test, 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 optimize, test, 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 optimize, track the numbers that you receive and you can check like what were the most expensive keywords and then based on that you create bidding strategy, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so Twitter is very much complex now. They changed a lot of their policies and, the, uh, and optimization, but there is a way to this and thi this field is very popular. There are a lot of people in the world who are promoting Web3, crypto, blockchain, et cetera. So it's very hard to find your way there, but be consistent, promote every day, like five ads per day, and then you will rank. <laughs> and there are a lot of other things, but we don't have time for that now. Thank you.